Rabbi, good afternoon. Hello, Isaac. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Blessed be he. So I've noticed that sometimes you say blessed be he, sometimes you say the word God, sometimes you don't use the word God. Uh, so generally uh, in my life, I say Baruch Hashem, which means blessed be God. Uh -huh. But as you are not of the Hebrew speaking or Jewish uh, faith, I figure sometimes I'll translate it in my head and say blessed be he. So I really don't say blessed be he to anyone but you. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. In fact, I noticed that the, the, the prayers by Daniel and the prayers by, uh, by the prophet Zechariah, they both start with this thing, blessed be the name of God. And since you mentioned this, you know, the, the, the best, the highest form of prayer is to bless God's name. The Lord's prayer even starts with, hallowed be thy name. So, uh, the Lord's prayer starts with, Abu Hadishmaya, Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one time I used to try to memorize the, uh, the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, um, the way that Jesus would have wanted it. But um, towards the end, the Aramaic, I was Because the Aramaic that's spoken, uh, or, or not spoken, but read today, mm -hmm. isn't read Arabicized. Namely, uh, the, the Aramaic that's read today by Jews, mm -hmm. they, uh, certain letters were crossed off or not read. So, for example, the W is not read anymore, and uh, the HA is not read anymore when uh, Jews read it. So, um, Abu Dishmaya, you know, you get to have an more authentic Aramaic when you read it. Anyways, <laughs> fun facts about uh, the Lord's Prayer. Well, fun facts about this whole Kohelis you're living through. Fun facts about this whole hot air stuff you're living through. So um, there we go. I have a lot of, okay, so uh, <laughs> God willing, we're going to get to our second Bible slash Old Testament uh, prophecy fulfillment of Matthew. This one is very different than the first one. Um, I didn't look this up. I'm pretty sure the first one uh, from, from memory is that a specifically Matthean citation, but I believe this one also happens in Mark. And one of the things that uh, to note is that I believe there are 11 Matthean Old Testament of Bible fulfillments. And, you know, it's interesting if you wanted to make a, uh, a point of the hermeneutics or, or even the exegesis of the Matthean community, you probably would focus on the ones that are solely found in this gospel and not in the other synoptics. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you. I, uh, what I've noticed is that uh, all the prophecies in Matthew are primarily based on the book of Isaiah. Well, well so he, um, he, the, one, he called, the one that we're about to read is not, right? Uh, the one we're about to read comes from Micah chapter 5. Micah was a contemporary of Isaiah. Uh, he's actually, it's one I of the see, interesting... Yeah, Micah. Micah, uh, or in Hebrew, Micha, is one of the interesting, uh, what we'll, we'll talk about when we read it. How about let's read, read the verse. Let's okay. read 2.4 to 2.6. I, I know we're going to fly today and probably fall, go through three verses, as, as unimaginable as that is. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 2, verses, verses 4 onwards. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means... Sorry, got muted. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people Israel. Okay. Uh, that's great. So um, before we analyze My, uh, Micah 5.2, let's just do the, the preceding verse that we didn't quite get to yesterday. Yeah. I think there's a really a, a lot of interesting things that are happening in 2.4. Um, so is there anything that you would like to note about 2.4? Yeah, the, the first thing is that, like, I mean, uh, this goes back to a conversation yesterday. So these people show up, and why is the entire city, like, like, why do people get caught up on this? Because again, in the, that's a, I mean, that's where we left off, right? So, these, when I mean pagan, I mean non-Jewish magi show up over here and they follow astrology and they say we saw the star, and they somehow they, they somehow this they, you know, somehow this reaches uh, the year of of Herod, and the chief priests. And, I mean, everyone was troubled, and I go like. What about it? Like, given that uh, people like Jesus or people who claim to be the Messiah was a common was a common occurrence back in the day, 
what about this one instant which drew the attention of right. the parent and, what, and the what's people interesting uh number one is uh that this is not even jesus claiming to the messiah this is someone else so while we did say it is a common occurrence for people to claim to the messiah in the first century such that there was even another guy named jesus mm -hmm. who claimed to be the messiah uh what's interesting here is that we our, our jesus can't speak yet quite quite a baby so that's number one mm -hmm. number two uh which I, i'm not sure we noted it's not obvious at least at the onset that christ and king are interchangeable because i would assume that the king is the christ that makes sense but no one thinks that king herod is a or the christ mm -hmm. because he's a king so the question is when the gospel uses the word king mm -hmm. versus uses the word christ which as we mentioned means the anointed one the one who's most likely anointed with the king the oils to, to announce him as king Mm -hmm. Why would the gospel use the word king versus Christ? And that's a good point. And so is it, is it because that the word king of the Jews was used for the, it's used for the very first time by this Magi. Could it, is it possible to, to pause it? The Magi didn't have, they didn't have a concept of Christ. To them, it's about kingdom. Kings that, that, that's and, a beautiful answer, Isaac. Uh, so you're true. saying that you don't have an anointed one unless you're already are holding in Jewish theology. And th yeah. th I think that answer totally makes sense. And, and maybe, and, and maybe that's why that's why King Herod freaked out because he knew that he's the anointed one. He probably, he knew that he is a king and, you know, and, and he when wouldn't have been anointed with anointing oils when he was he, made. King. Yeah. But I mean, so like, he was not the Christ. He probably knew that he's not the Christ. He, he knew that he's a king, but he's, he, he didn't, so he, he, you know, he mostly knew that he's well, not the, the... The question is, again, is, is Christ, does the word Christ just mean Messiah, or does the word Christ just mean king, and then a king has the potential to be Messiah? So it's like, for example, yeah. did this baby born of Mary and Holy Spirit inherently have to be the Messiah? Or could he have only been, was it a possibility? He was only, could have been the king of the Jews and he could have earned or fulfilled the prophecy to the Messiah. Was it that he was born a determined light, deterministically, yeah. and he was born to be not only king, but also Messiah? Or can we bifurcate those two concepts? So I would, you know, I would push back on this. So this is the very first time in our conversations you, you've used the word deterministic, right? So what that means. So I would, what I would suggest is, is it like Messiah born, is... Before he was born, yeah. they said he's going to do something. That's the well, Yeah, but that's, I mean, okay, now, so you probably, now this goes back to why prophecy, like just because somebody said something, uh, what is prophecy, how this fulfilled? So here's what I would suggest. I mean, here's what I come, I, I look at this, that Messiah is, is, is all compassing. When I say somebody's Messiah, that he's also a king, right? So in, in the word Messiah, I mean, at least the way uh, I understand this, he's a Messiah, right? So a king is a part of it. So I don't look at king being anything apart from it. You know, the Messiah is a bigger term than king. And so there is no term, I mean, at, at least um, the Magi, they didn't use the word Christ at all. They're only king of the Jews. And I think Herod is the first person who put Messiah, who put Christ or who could combine Christ and king of the Jews together. So, and that's something which is so surprised because he asked them, where was the Christ to be born? The Magi didn't say the Christ. The, the Magi only said the King of the Jews. But in verse four, he says he you now like where right. is the so, Christ? Right. Again, to this is this is super. Okay, let's, let's, there's so many different points here. So number one, I think we would we would be remiss if we did not note that Jesus was never recognized as King of the Jews, even according to Christian theology. Right. What do you mean by that? He is like he he was crucified as he King of the never Jews. Never recognized. Uh, okay, uh, let's take me a step back. Isaac, if I would say someone is a king, what is the definition of a king? Oh, that's okay. That's that's a good question. So a king has a kingdom. Right? Oh, a king, has a, a king. kingdom. Okay, good. One. And um, he has followers. Followers, okay. So if I, I live in Teaneck right now, I have my house yeah. in Teaneck as my little kingdom, and I got yeah. my kids, and yeah. they're stuck to be my followers. Am I yeah. a king? Could be, you know, in fact, for, for, for what it's worth, right? My, my last name means king. Raj means kingdom. As the people ask Isaac, where is the kingdom? I mean, so to be a king, I mean, so to, to be serious, to be a king should be anointed. I mean, I mean, anointed, like you didn't have a kingdom and followers. I think the the the, the modern day concept of kings is, is leadership, right? People, speak, we want to be in positive leadership. We follow them, but yeah, there's places where they sit, but at a minimum, right? I think you're minimizing. It sounds like you're minimizing and diminishing the notion of king. 
Uh, I think a king is a lot more regal and monarchical and bigger than you're saying. You can't just have a plot of land and follow it. I mean, said, okay, isn't that our conception that to be a king, you should have, you have to be regal, have to be a monarch, I mean, have to have a monarch and have to be Okay, regal. so I'll, I'll see. I don't know the, I, this is a great discussion because I, I don't know the answer, but I'll, I'll throw out some facts and you can yeah. tell me. So there's a very famous Talmudic line that says, Ein melech bliam. There's no such thing as a king without a nation. Yeah, so you have a to be, have a kingdom. Yeah, have a, a, and, and I think that also means that he's the representative mm -hmm. of the people. There's actually another Talmudic line that says that a king could pardon, sorry, I'm sorry, any person could pardon their honor for mm -hmm. any reason, mm -hmm. but a king can never pardon his honor because a king doesn't represent himself. Mm -hmm. He represents his nation. Let me put it this way. Was Moses a king? Let Absolutely not. Why? Like he, so, he so, so rabbinic literature does give him the status of a no, king? No, no. Let, let, let's leave theology, right? Let's just look from the place of, the, here's a person. He led, he led a group of people from point A to point B. They fought, they fought battles. He led them in battle. He was the deciding factor in, in almost everything they did. Like if he said something... Things, sounds, he they, sounds like a parent. No, but okay, <laughs> okay, but but then wasn't he a king? Now he he wasn't regal, he wasn't monarchical, but wasn't you know wasn't wasn't Moses like a king? Let's leave. I mean, leaving theology part. I mean, leaving the the, the theology part of all that. He led a group of people to a land, and uh, they fought battles. He so, secured so this land. again, so again, like I think we're gonna be stuck because there's a lot. Usually, a king is associated with sovereign over a land. That's usually, I, I, I'm making like, can you, what happens if you're a king in exile? Are you not king anymore? So you see, even when a sovereign over land doesn't work out, some people in, on, on our opening list uh, in Matthew were also, you know, uh, taken away by, uh, by, uh, by kings. So I think you're supposed to be <laughs> potentially sovereign over land. Um, you're supposed to represent a people. If you're a king with no people, and I, again, yeah. I feel like maybe you have a small country, but you're meant to have a king. But putting that aside, so now let's like whatever definition you want to work with. Can it be said that by the time Jesus died, that he was king of the Jews? Can it be said? According to whatever definition you want. When, like, like now when he died, there was another king of the Jews who was king at that point that was recognized by Rome, that was recognized by the Jewish people. Jesus, let's say Matthew was written in the year 80 whatever, like significantly after Jesus' death, mm -hmm. they're looking back. Did anyone, when they're writing the history of the kings of Israel, include Jesus at that time among the kings of Israel? No, I'm going to say a resounding hell no. No, yeah, no, no way. <laughs> no way, no way. That's right. No way. No. But I think so. The, oh, my God. We got yeah. a subversive king now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's what it, So, well, you know, I didn't think about this, but I need to think about this deeply before I can give you, before I give you an answer. But here's my, here's how, here's my question, right? So, yes, Jesus was not a king by any traditional definition of a king. He claimed to be a king, and he, he died as, at least he, on his crucifix, as a king of the Jews. But, again, he's not in, in the, he, like, He's not. He's not a king by human definition, or by 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 by, <laughs> he's not by, a king by human definition. Well, I think so. It's a human <laughs> is not a good that, word. That's like saying I'm not. I'm. A, I'm an angel, just no, not I'm by sorry. human definition. Yeah. It kind of came out, kind of came out badly. So he's not a king by any historical, by any uh, hist by historical, I mean, by any the, normal definition. The definition, fine. Yeah. But then, but then here's 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 how here's my question, to you right? So, so could it be that? Um, his life's purpose was to usher in a new kingdom. Maybe did he envision a future, a future kingdom and said, well, I'm going to be. To do that. Let's say his job was like, I agree. His job is to usher in a new kingdom. So lots of people usher, like Muhammad ushered yeah. in a new yeah. kingdom. Yeah. Lots of people could usher new kings without being yeah. king. Yeah. So if, if I were to ask you as, as a good Christian, Isaac, I accept, let's just say, I accept Jesus is whatever theological things you want. He, he's Messiah is this. Mm -hmm. I say that, yes, maybe, but he was th these things. But in the end, when he died, he just was never actually the king. And yeah. the Magi, mm -hmm. the Magi were wrong. In what way? Help me understand this. Wrong. He's never made king. Uh, okay, well, I see. Okay, so, okay, <laughs> you know so. Human definition. Yeah, okay, well, the, the, it kind of came out badly. So, so okay, so. The one thing we've noted is that this whole chapter is just riddled with all kinds of mysteries. So these people show up, they follow a star, they come over here. And so even when they use the word king, I think we're trying to fit them within our definition of our definition of what's meant by king. Is it possible? 
Well, just, I mean, uh, no, wait, 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 wait. Whenever, whenever they said Herod, yeah, Herod so, was responding to something. Yeah, but so, so they told him king, but, but probably uh, Herod took this to be a Messiah because they, didn't, they never used the word Christ. They never used the word Christ. This is king of the Jews. Herod it's, took this to be Messiah? Herod took this to be king, no? No, no. So, so look at verse 4, right? Uh, and, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. Now, the Magi never use the word Christ. They, the Magi use the word King. Herod is the one who kind of who kind of mixed up Christ and King of the Jews, and that's where and the, and and it's from that point on is where people get crazy. Like, this, is the Christ the King of the Jews? Now, but then, so the question I would have is, we've already now we now we've um, so far we've defined like we've we've identified that that this chapter or this passage has has lots of mystery. These people follow a star. They come over here. They show up over here. The um, the star it stops in a place. It's a possible that they probably had a different definition, and the closest they could come to was king. And so Jesus, I mean, in some ways he was. I mean, he was a king, but he was not a king by our, you know, by our, you know, the the king in which the, the way in which we use the word king. I mean, he 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 envisioned a future kingdom, and I'm I'm still not clear. But I I I would. I would suggest, I mean, I would push back saying Herod didn't have, Herod did not have this concept of a different kind of, I mean, in his mind, king means Messiah, Messiah meant king. And so if he had not, if he had probably asked him, help me understand what's meant by this, maybe his team might have taken a different path. But yes, he, I, Jesus I think, was, yeah. go ahead. Uh, so I, I don't know that any of the answers, yeah. um, but you are correct that the next verse does say King Herod refers to this person as the Messiah, namely yeah. as the anointed one, and the Magi do refer to him to as a king. Yeah. And I think we need to understand why that changed. And probably and probably the, the, the Magi didn't know what's meant by Messiah. They probably only knew king because that's how they live. And Herod, all he knew was Messiah. Probably he was so fearful of the Messiah. And so here's, here's an example where somebody meant something and people took this to be something else and then it took a life of its own. So... So, okay, that makes sense. Let, let me throw out a theory that I understand. Amen, amen, that makes sense. Amen, so Jesus. No, no, I, I don't so, know. I don't so, know. So, so Jesus is a king, okay, amen, but not okay, a king. Herod's not... father yeah. uh, was anti-Potter, right? And generally historians view anti-Potter as really the reason that Herod was able to come to power because of his good standing with uh, Julius Caesar. Mm -hmm. And some point, you know, between 50 and 40 uh, BCE, mm -hmm. um, uh, anti, uh, Herod was appointed to be the governor of the Galil, of the Galilee. And eventually, over time, he was able to um, kind of take over and, and, and be king. Is it possible that we should view Jesus' accounts of being king in the context of some people at that point did not view the Jewish people as having a king? The whole idea of like the, this differentiation between Messiah and King, I, I think is real. I, I think it's different to be like the Messiah that's mentioned in the Bible definitely can't be the King and it could just be the guy who comes in the day of the Lord. But this idea that maybe see, but so much of this is so king. much of this is based upon so much of this is based upon based upon our our understanding of prophecy, right? Our, our verse was claimed. So we're trying to fit this based upon something which I said so many years ago. Say something was said. So based upon that, this person should be this. But could it be that person is both this and this? Could be like why not be open? Why not be open to things which which challenge our assumptions of how things should be? Right. I, I'm just saying. But like, I, it could be that there's this anger happening behind the scenes. So you know that the right now it's it's, it's Hanukkah. And uh, the Hasmonean kings ruled from 140 until 63 BCE. And then Herod came and took over like a little while after that. But Herod overthrew the Hasmonean king Antigonus after a three-year uh, three war between 37 and 34 when he finally took over BCE. So it could be that this differentiation between king and Messiah is kind of hinting at there was these Jewish Hasmonean kings. Mm -hmm. And then... Herod was granted king of Judea by the Roman Senate, overruling this, this normal Jew, Jewish pattern. And therefore, he, certain people viewed the need to replace King Herod and eventually his uh, three sons with a Jewish king. And that's maybe this, this, this dichotomy that's taking place behind the scenes here.
so let me ask you so here's so here's what here's what here's what i'm also intrigued right so uh, i see what you're saying i hear what you're saying it feels like there's a difference yeah I so I why did really why did herod go to this why did herod consult the scribe the, the chief priest and the scribes okay so uh, so uh, i didn't even get to that line yet let's so let's leave this theory to the side yeah. that there's something about jewish anger taking place behind the scenes yeah. about king herod so th- and potter before him and then his uh, sons who eventually take over the, the, the ethnarchs right yeah. who eventually so- eventually take over after uh, after he dies um, and all of them are coming from Idumean uh, background, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're, you're, you're pointing out that there's also this Jewish council taking place also right now, oh, right? Why, yeah, why, like, why did Herod go consult them, right? Why, why not call other people? Like, why did he go? I mean, why not consult the people in his, in his palace to say, if they've come, what's this? Like, why specifically reach out to the Jewish leadership, right? Or okay. do these... Let's break down the two categories of people that are being discussed, and then we can try to figure out why he was discussing with them. So one group are the chief priests, and the other group are the Torah scholars, the scribes, the rabbis, whatever you want to call them. So the first group, the chief priests. So the first thing that we're going to note is that there's no such thing as chief priests. There's a chief priest in the singular, and there are other priests. So this actual, this, this actual concept of chief priests is very foreign to Jewish uh, ideology. The one thing that you should know is that historically, before uh, the Hasmonean revolt even, and, it's, uh, and for many years, that there was this overlap between king and priest and high priest. And a lot of times the high priest was the person who ruled the country from a, from a national perspective. Yeah, that and that's, like, that's king, like Moses. Right? Like Moses wasn't chief priest, he was kind of the prophet, but Moses, he also- Moses, made... Moses acted sometimes as chief priest, but he also appointed his brother as chief priest. So yeah. it depends on different time periods. Um, uh, we're, we're past what a king is. Okay. Who knows? But, but the, point, the point is that it's really interesting how they call chief priests. Over here in his circles, there have probably been two groups he had to discuss with, his advisors, the rabbis, and then the priests. So why would a king have rabbis and his advisors? So he, that's because the- I think that you're, you're viewing rabbis today in their somewhat powerless states. When, when, when um, Jesus is interacting with Rabban Gamliel, Mm-hmm. and different people in, uh, the, in, in the New Testament, mm-hmm. there's a sense that the, the rabbis are part of the patriarch, which means that the, these rabbis, uh, definitely after the time of Jesus, like for example, 120 years later, or 100 years later, you have Rabbi Judah the Prince, which is Rabbi Judah Hanasi, which is the national leader of the Jewish people. So there's always this overlap between high priest and leader. And th- 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 even when we have this separation, at the time of Moses between Aaron, the high priest, and Moses, the Hasmoneans kind of consolidated that role. And even though that ended in 63 BCE, um, there still was a sense that the high priest should have this kind of a higher level power. Okay, so... So it's not foreign that he spoke to them. Okay. It would be very normal that if there is a, um, a, a belief about stars mm-hmm. or a belief about how um, any, any form of astrology should play out, these guys would probably have a deeper or most scientific or educated perspective on this. Yeah, so, okay, so here's the thing. He was a king appointed by the Romans. The Romans were not Jewish. Is it possible that in his court, he had people of different faith backgrounds? I mean, he should he, didn't he? Did he have people from different backgrounds? There definitely like what, were non-Jews living in Israel or Judea. Yeah, so why did he single out only these chief priests and rabbi? Like, why because not call... He was, not the, he was like... If you imagine that, let's say I'm the king of, of America, there still might be hotspots of, of Native American tribes, there might be people from New York who, who are breaking away. Just because you're the king of the Jews doesn't mean you're the king of the people's belief systems. So if you're gonna have people who work for you, these are the people who would have worked inside of his, uh, his monarchy and his castle. Okay. So, so it's not cheap- surprising that he spoke to them but why only them? That's my thing. So, okay, we, he spoke to them, but... These are the advisors. So didn't he have non-Jewish advice, non-Jewish, again, I mean, Gentile, I mean, leaders or people of faith who were non-Jewish or whatever that means, right? So back in the day when he ruled there, if there were non-Jewish people as part of his kingdom, um, what about their... I mean, there's nothing obviating the possibility that he had people who were non-Jews in his cabinet, especially as many of his relatives would have been Idumean and not Jewish. And uh, he obviously had relations with uh, Syria, Nabataeans, Egyptians, and others. 
but uh, it doesn't seem that's a key factor in, over here about who his, the, the thing that they want us to know, uh, the author of Matthew, is that he consulted the Jews. Yeah, he comes across as being paranoid because they said king, he made one thing and then he ran away well, here. He is viewed as one of the more, the, one of the more, or if not the most paranoid people. And even, I'll be honest, like the, going back to our deterministic point, um, it's very rare to find determinism outside of there will be a Messiah. So the best we have is generally like Jeremiah uh, yeah. in the first chapter in Jeremiah like 1, 5 or somewhere. It, it says that Jeremiah was chosen to be a prophet mm -hmm. before he started. And that's generally viewed as like almost like a question uh, amongst the Jewish commentators. Like how could someone be chosen for a role? And it's and Jesus definitely has this parallel to Jeremiah the prophet mm -hmm. that they are both chosen from, from birth, or, or yeah. in this case, while they're still in the womb, mm -hmm. literally for both of them. So um, it, it's very unclear so the what only... it means to, to like, can, the, can Jesus or Jeremiah choose not to be prophets? Yeah. Can Jesus choose not to be, can he make poor decisions and he choose could. not to be the son he of could. God he and could. carry out the Messianic mission? He could, right, he could, right. And so, well, this is where I come from. So this is, I mean, so, even in the Christian faith, there's a huge there's a huge debate about uh, about uh, what do you call it about predestination and free will and the again and um, uh, the Wesleyan or the Armenian way and, and the Calvin way of has like, has God chosen people here or there, and I think the uh, you know when we look at these conversations, we have to be, we've got to be mindful of we're making assumptions about an uncreated beings relationship with space and time we say future time space and so i look at this to say jesus could have walked away from all of this as, as a human being he could have but as said from the you know from it's with he being fully god could he have i don't know but i look at this from a human perspective he could have he could have when he we, could have so for example when we say the messiah is born the magi does that mean that the messiah is born and that this is going to happen or this possibly could happen is this automatically going to happen that the King of the Jews, the Messiah, is born? Um, I lost you. Yeah, I'm, it, it's unclear, right? It, it's it's unclear. I so when you so I I lost you on the spot. So when you say so, which verse is that? Which verse? Well, it's still the verse we're on. Uh, we, we we haven't gone on. Uh, so you know when we were talking about just two two to two five, uh, two two to two four. Uh, I'm, I'm noting the, you know, as you pointed out, that one time he's called King of the Jews and one time he's called Messiah. So if he's King of the Jews, it's weird that he's never in the end even identified as King of the Jews practically. Number two, if he's the Messiah, can he choose not to be a Messiah, a Messiah or is this predetermined in the way that Jeremiah is predetermined? I, so I would be hesitant to use the word predetermined. I think that's just who he is. Like it's, it's not about who he becomes. He is born a Messiah. I mean, for unto us, I mean, this goes back to the verse in Isaiah, right? For okay, unto so, us, so, a so let, me, let me take a step back. Yeah. You mentioned the word ministry already. And uh, so if I said to you, he was born the Messiah. Mm -hmm. What does the Messiah have to accomplish and or execute in order to prove or to be the Messiah? So why do you have to prove, right? You're brought, no, no, like, so you, said, right? you don't he's have born to the Messiah. Yeah. What does it mean to be the Messiah during your lifetime? Let's say he, he was born the Messiah. He dies the Messiah, but he never spoke to anyone. No one ever knew of him. He, when he went to Egypt, he never came back. He lived at a hermit the rest of his life. Is he still the Messiah? Good, right? He, I mean, so, the so, Let's say the Romans, the Romans, their, their empire falls. Yeah. Fiction becomes not a real thing. Mm -hmm. And Jesus lives a nice long life and he ends up playing uh, and just like having a happy death. Is he still the Messiah? See, but that didn't happen, right? But that, oh, that, that okay. see, no, see, but, 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 but then. I'm willing to accept a predetermined reality for him. It didn't yeah. have to happen. I'd have to think about this much more deeply before I give an answer. But the point, I mean, what we know is we know what happened. But what I'm hesitant is to 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 make the claim to be in a, that he has to prove something to be a messiah. I don't think he has to prove anything. He is God. He was born. Well, he you was know, in born. Jewish tradition, it's very different, though, right? In Jewish tradition, there's like a checklist to be the messiah. And and, and if you don't finish the checklist, yeah. when you die, you go, nice try, not the messiah. So so, what is the checklist? So the checklist is different according to some people, but in short, it is to be the sovereign king of the Jewish people and the Jewish people of the land, yeah. return at least 51% of the Jewish people to the land of Israel to make sure to fight some war. And I think, so, so yeah, so, so, and I think Jesus probably came to, to, to turn the definition on its head. So oh, he, I got you. So, 
this is what people he, think. Jesus is the Messiah in a way that no one understood. Yeah. Is that still the Messiah? He is the Messiah, right? He I'm saying, the, but like, imagine he's the Messiah, but not in a way that it meant anything to anyone. Well, it, it didn't mean anything to the people in that time. So there are so many folks who lived, there are people who lived, who, people who've lived, that we have this term, we have this term where we, where we honor people posthumously. People live, people die, they're completely forgotten, but so many years later we remember them. So, so, my, my, point is, so, so my point is, we do have this category where people live, make contributions, and they aren't recognized in their lifetime. And stuff happens, but we know that again, that name again, uh, we remember them even after they're gone. And so, um, I, I want to give a counter argument. I, I see what you're saying. It doesn't. No, 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 I'm not even trying to make a point. I don't know. Uh, but it, it's really interesting that he was a king, but was he really a king? He was a he king. Was Messiah, he, so, but was he really a Messiah? He was he a Messiah. He, he was a Messiah. He, he was a. So he is a Messiah. He is a king. But even he, a Jew. If yeah. the Judaism of that time, according to some opinions, went by the man, mm -hmm. it, it, then his father wasn't even Jewish. <laughs> his father, like his father was the Holy Spirit. So he may not have been Jewish, he may not have been a king, he may have been Messiah, or he might have been all three of them. Yeah, so he is all three of them, but he does not fit our definitions of worthy. So we cannot look at them with a preconceived definition. This is what I think a Messiah should be. And I think... And I, and I think, and I think, what Jesus is doing is the Jews, have, as you said, Jews have the checklist of here. If a Messiah should do this, 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 he said, I am this, but I'm not going to confirm to your definition of who you think of who you think a Messiah should be. And I think, and I think that's a fun. I mean, that's 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 a given of life, right? We. But yeah. what about the fact that this is written, as as we talk about multiple times, for the Matthean community? Yeah. And I definitely view this gospel as intended to be an argument intended to kind of show yeah at way after like a generation after jesus is dead yeah. to show that this is why we found this guy important yeah God like holy spirit yeah. and if this isn't gonna if, if everything's gonna be subversive yeah everything's gonna be a different definition it really won't work as an argument so i think like like when we look at the beginning and we looked at the genealogy you and i view that as an argument it's meant to prove something we have to show something. We could have skipped it. So if everything is just different definitions, we still have to come to a point where it's meant to prove something to someone who's reading it. That's true. I need to think about this. So as to, before I give you an answer, I, I need to think more deeply about this. But I think that the bigger point is this is meant to be subversive. And it does, it does can turn people's definitions on its head uh, as to what people think. And, and that seems to be a common theme across, across Matthew. It's not just with this one verse. Again, in the chapters to come to, Jesus takes every, every definition which they had and turns it up on its head. Or at least that's the, way, that's the way the author wants us to view the scene. So, I told you when I visited the Sermon on the Mound, I couldn't believe that was a mound. Yeah, you know, that, I found the mound itself was subversive. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "This is a mound." I always imagined a mound. It looked like, uh, you know, it was like uh, four feet tall. Yeah, but this is a but. Uh, you do raise a great question, right? Can somebody be, be a messiah and be a king without having accomplished anything in their lifetime? Or can someone be a king without having a kingdom? Well, and, uh, even the, if you're this, a believer, yeah, even, so, but, even if you want to say Jesus changed the metaphysical underpinnings of the way the world, the way that reality would proceed after his death, which I think yeah. is the, the position that you keep advocating for, that whatever happened in his life, the world was metaphysically different after his death. So, so it could I be that's the case. And you don't need him to physically, he could have just stayed in Egypt. See, and, and, and okay, he, see, that's the thing. Again, so, from umbrellas. So, from again, so may I clarify? I don't mean to say that after this, there's something changed. I mean, yes, it changed, but but um, the change was happening all along. But at his death, it, it became, at, at his death and his, his resurrection, it became more evident. And I think I was still pushed back against your, against a preconceived notion to say that, that why didn't he do this? I mean, I think this is life people do people live lives the way they did and at and at a minimum I, I don't think we can try we can try to make him fit within a certain paradigm a certain model to say why not do this why not, why do this this way this is just life this is just how he chose or this is how things played out and 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 history history came out through i mean again history played out through his life so he was a king he he claimed to be a king and i believe he was a king he claimed to be the messiah i believe the messiah but not a king and a messiah the way in which we define him or where history is defined king, kings to be and i think that's in a even later on when when, when, when he's before Pilate, he said this kingdom 
I mean, my kingdom doesn't work in this way in fighting. My kingdom works in a different way. So, and so, um, is it subversive? Yes. Is so it- Isaac, we were, we were really hoping to get to uh, the Micah quotes. We didn't quite get there. Sounds like but I think you know, but I think you know, we we've touched upon a big topic, right? What does it mean? What does it mean to be a king? What does it right. mean to be a messiah? And do you have to like? Do you have? Are you born? Are you born a king, or do you become a king by doing something, or do you have to prove something to be a messiah king? And I think this is where Christianity and Judaism go off in two different places, generally speaking. Like Christianity, we, I mean, from okay, my so perspective, we'll have to keep this concept in the back of our heads as we read the rest of the gospel mm-hmm. to see if the definition is further refined for us. Amen. 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 Okay, Amen. Isaac. But 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 Herod is Herod is the first person in history to combine or, or, or to join this concept of King of the Jews with the with the Christ with with the Messiah. At no, least, no, 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 def, definitely not. Definitely. At least here were... in the Matthew Gospel, in, in the Matthew Gospel, Herod is the one who makes that leap or, or to make that jump, or at least in, to to make the jump from. Uh, from king to Christ, you know, because again, prior to that, that the Magi looked at him as a king, um, but he's the one who said the king and where's the Christ to be born. And, and well, it's- like I mentioned to you in Talmudic sources and in Jewish sources, there was always the expectation that the Christ, the anointed one will be the king because his anointing is to make him king. The word Christ means anointed. They're always meant to be like this. this uh, but on anointed. these two sides of a coin. So my question to you is, wouldn't those two can we look at can we look at Messiah and King to be two sides of a coin? Where yes, like I mean, you can't have a I mean, it's you know, you can't have one without the other. Yeah, Humanly, I think that's that's that definitely. If someone became king and he was not the Messiah, or someone came Messiah is not king, we we would we would question if he's fulfilling the theological definitions so, that we are hoping to that them to accomplish. So okay, so on that point, right? If somebody is a Messiah, can they challenge the definitions of a king? So could be right so all we have to prove is jesus the messiah if jesus is the messiah then could he be by being messiah could he challenge the definitions of, of what it is to be a king well he could and we could so that's fine okay isaac okay on that me. note you know this is a high I, point of my day this is the high point of my day rabbi to 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 discuss it keeps you awake at night something to think about i mean that's a, it is the, it is in this in this hot air we live this empty worth living for it's the it's. I feel it's, this is the best translation I ever gave you of uh, of Ecclesiastes. Uh, Hevel, man, hevelim, hot air. You love that definition. The hot air, and that's it's not just love. That's accurate, right? So much of life is just is just hot air. Anyway, on that note, thank you very much. Thank you.